This was your meeting in Houston just a few weeks ago. Well, if I opt for the permanent fix, will it keep me out of a wheelchair? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. No, we've, we've had uh, a, a number of uh, ALS you know, patients um, be able to get out of their wheelchairs. That's not true, is it? The Stone Foundation has not. You told Steve that you were going to keep him out of a wheelchair. That's not true either, is it? No, that's very true. You're going to sit here after seeing that, and you're going to look this man in the face and tell him that he's going to stay out of a wheelchair? I mean, that's cruel. Really? What is his prognosis if he doesn't do this? His prognosis is the same either way. No, it's not. Mr. Stowe, you told these men in Houston that a cure was, in, in your memorable phrase, 100% possible. Possible? Is that a guarantee? The folks at home are wondering, what goes through your mind when one of these men pushes a suitcase full of cash across the table to you? What are you thinking? I'm thinking that they came to the right place if they want any hope at all. So is there a permanent fix from the stem cells? Oh, well, yes. Many patients have pinned their hope on Dr. Frank Morales and his improvised stem cell procedures. Recently, he injected stem cells into the spine of a seven-year-old American boy in an attempt to treat the boy's autism, a procedure with no basis in medical science. We found Morales' training is dubious. This is the certificate he presented to a Monterey hospital showing he completed his training at Texas Tech University. But in the interview, he switched schools. Have you ever been licensed to practice medicine I, in the United I, States? I, I, was, I have, and I worked under uh, University of Texas where I was at in El Paso and uh, came to Mexico after that. You the University of Texas El Paso has no medical school and no record of Morales as a student. But you have a license, or I, had a I, license, to I, practice in the state absolutely. of Texas. It was an institutional license at the University of Texas El Paso, UTEC, UTEC. So it, you, you can go there, you'll find it. I mean, that's simple. That just, if you did your homework, that's lousiness. I mean, on your behalf, sorry to say. Not only does he have no credentials from the University of Texas, we found that his Texas Tech credentials are fraudulent. A Texas Tech lawyer told us, where it was obtained or manufactured, I couldn't say, but it was not issued by Texas Tech. Several minutes into the interview, we watched the Stowe-Morales relationship dissolve. Morales walked out, then came back to disavow Stowe. Scott, Scott, yeah, you know, I, I think that just in, in the sense of uh, using, you know, his, you know, using him to try to bring me down is that, I think, is is inappropriate. I mean, at least... Sit down and talk to me about it. Uh, well, I... Legal experts tell us that both Stowe and Morales have broken U.S. law, committed fraud by making a false claim. It doesn't matter that the procedure is done in another country. We wondered why the FDA is not acting against the many stem cell con artists whose websites are up for anyone to see. But the FDA commissioner, Margaret Hamburg, declined to talk with us on camera about any aspect of stem cell quackery. Many experts believe that the FDA is outmatched. Patients need to beware. Larry Goldstein, a prominent stem cell biologist, and researcher Doug Sipp are with the International Society for Stem Cell Research, an organization of the world's leading stem cell scientists. SIP is tracking bogus stem cell clinics all around the world. And how have these operations grown, say, in the last five years or so? I would say the growth has been explosive. I've been tracking it uh, kind of closely for the past three years, and uh, I've been able to come up with more than 200 clinics that are offering some uh, version of stem cells for some type of medical condition uh, for which there's no really uh, good evidence that the stem cells would be either safe or effective. Well, are all of these clinics frauds? On one end of the spectrum, you have people who are doing essentially uh, badly designed, uh, uncontrolled human medical experiments for profit. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you just have thieves who are preying on the sick and their families. Now, an ALS patient might say to you, 
how could I possibly be worse? This is, this is the question you get sometimes. How could I possibly be worse? I'm going to die. I'm going to die Why not in give two it a try? or three years. Why not give it a try? Well, what if, as a result of this treatment, you ended up in excruciating pain? What if you managed to bankrupt your family through the use of one of these expensive unauthorized treatments so that they can't care for you properly as you decline? <coughs> There are things that are worse than, than, than your current situation, I think. The experts in stem cell research believe these procedures are at best ineffective and potentially dangerous. A study by UCLA found patients at a Chinese clinic often developed spinal meningitis. But there's rarely any mention of risk on the websites that offer false hope for dozens of afflictions ranging from Down syndrome to cancer. One of the different things now is that the power of the internet now gives this tremendous global reach to people who in the past would be kind of the local quack. So instead of the snake oil salesman standing in the back of a pickup truck, right. he can now reach every ALS patient on earth. And say, come to me and I'll, I'll help you out in Mexico or in Russia or in Thailand. What we see here essentially is Stowe on an industrial scale. Stowe on steroids. Yeah, you could say that. And he might as well be sticking his hands into the pockets of those people and taking the money out without even talking to them. That's, that's how bad I think it is. You know, I wonder what you think when the top people in the field that you pretend to work in call you a snake oil salesman. Comes with the territory. It does come with the territory. I wonder what you we wondered what Stowe would say to the idea of giving Michael Martin his $47,000 back. Has he asked for it? I'm asking. We'd give it back to him. Now that's a deal I'd like to make. Really? Okay. And when he continues to go downhill six months from now and hasn't made any progress, are you going to cover the cost of his care? I'm not buying what you're selling. Fine. Of course, that refund never came. When we first walked into the interview, we thought Stowe might not stay. But he sat there for two hours, as though if he only talked long enough, he'd convince us. Thanks for sitting with us and oh, talking yeah. to us. Now, you're not running away on me, are you? Well, I was planning on leaving, yes. Okay. I think I'm done. All right. Thank you. You've just cost this man his life. I want you to know that. You know, I don't think so. Okay. Larry Stowe never gave up, even after his lies were exposed. When we left the room, he turned to ALS patient Michael Martin and tried to close the sale. We'll keep in touch. Because I can tell you, and you know what's going to happen. If you don't take some type of aggressive action. When we brought Stowe and Morales to the attention of the FDA, the agency started an investigation which is ongoing. Michael Martin and Steve Waters continue to fight against the progression of ALS. What would you like to see happen to Larry Stowe? I don't care, Martin said. He has to live with himself. In what was perhaps an attempt to keep this story off the air, Frank Morales filed suit against us, Larry Stowe, and the two ALS patients, Steve Waters and Michael Martin.